So with me today is Pete Garitano, and we're going to talk a little bit first about what he sees and what I see is happening here to our institutions, our economy, our constitution, as the uh, coronavirus still is mounting in our state. So, hi, Pete. What's hi. going on? Well, um, like you said, the cases are rising in, uh, and the deaths in Vermont, unfortunately. And um, we've made national news lately, uh, not a really great thing to make the news for because we had the highest uh, case rate in the country one week. And uh, actually that same week, Florida had the lowest case rate in the country. So um, I, I think, yeah, what we're here to talk about is, and, it's, and I've gone to a bunch of the meetings, um, town meetings about masking, and a lot of people are voicing the same concerns that um, if it's not working, somebody admit it and let's try something different. Because mm -hmm. um, we, we've killed businesses, um, there's so much collateral damage that's going on. Suicides are up, drug overdoses are up, mm -hmm. child abuse is up, wife abuse is up. And this has all been written about in many, many publications. This is not a secret. The, the, the damage from the lockdowns and the masking is, is much worse than what's happening from the COVID. And pretty much everybody ad admits this now, and, and that's just ongoing. Um, and you notice it in the courts, but, right. but, but we also, we can look around and see that there are states that aren't, are done with this and have said, okay, let's go back to what we were doing before. And they're actually doing just fine. And they're not only doing fine, but their economy's booming in, in places like Texas and Florida. Colorado too. Yes, Colorado mm -hmm. and, and, and people that watch TV have been watching football games for the last three months where there's been 100,000 people in the stands that are unmasked, who knows if they're vaccinated, because they're certainly not checking people's vaccine cards in Alabama at a football game. And they haven't had any big outbreaks, contrary to what uh, our experts, Dr. Fauci, keeps insisting are gonna happen. It's not happening. In fact, cases down south since the beginning of football season, I looked up Alabama, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, and Louisiana have all been plummeting. And so we have people going to tailgate parties, going to restaurants, going to football games, all unmasked. And here we're having a town meeting to decide if five people can go into a store without a mask on. It, it, it makes no sense. Pete, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about that, actually. But um, you mentioned something else, which I've seen over and over. And, and it scares me, frankly. And that is um, what's happening in some of our real primary institutions of our society, for instance, in the courts. It is so difficult since the courts closed to get cases, especially for poor people, adjudicated. Um, and for instance, criminal jury trials, they would have been stopped in places, which means people linger in jail for months on end before they're convicted of any crime. That's all pre-trial. They can't have visits. It was an outbreak, by the way, recently in one of our prisons among, and it's a thoroughly vaccinated environment. Everybody in the prisons, staff and so forth, have to be vaccinated, and yet there's all these breakthrough cases, which means further kind of punishment on the prisoners there. And those people are in general, a lot of them pre-trial. They are not, have not been convicted of any crime. Um, and it's a general breakdown, I believe, in the rule of law, including uh, in the national level. For instance, when uh, President Biden issued a vaccine mandate for employers over 100, remember that? Right. The courts stopped him from doing that and said he doesn't have the power. This, to me, is a real constitutional crisis. Right. And yet he has said over and over, do it anyway. Do it anyway. And that occurred even in New York City, where people who are unvaxxed can't really even go in a restaurant anymore without a certificate, right? Right. And, and at some point, yeah, I mean, he's overstepping his bounds, but there, there's been so much press um, about the danger and the transmissibility and, and, it, and everything else that people, people are hooked into this belief that everything that they've been told is true. but currently pretty much all the things that people were saying a year ago have been proven by data to not be true and i don't mean scientific experiments i mean the actual data of what's happening out there in the world okay wait a minute now you basically study this every morning don't you pretty much yes um and then you are a lay person yes. correct but you're a smart person an intelligent person I like to think and so. and you do this because it concerns you correct it concerns me and it's 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 very interesting. I started doing it last March, actually. Um, 
When it happened. When, when it, it started yeah. happening, right. I started looking into all the stuff and mainly reading medical journals and the CDC's journal, you know, publications and WHO and now the state of Vermont. Um, and, and at this point, um, now, so, some of these things have just become outright lies. I mean, it, it, I, I, I'm not going to call names, but when, when you have this, I'm going I'm to call out the city of Burlington, who in their proclamation for mandates made the statement that breakthrough cases were rare. This is absolutely not true. They're common. Rare, in medical terms, is something that's one in a thousand to one in 10,000. Breakthrough cases right now in Vermont are as common as regular cases. So, well, that's not, I mean, the, I've thought that the statistics say that breakthrough cases are about a third or not. Well, they're 34% in Vermont in the last three months. Okay. But still, that doesn't constitute rare by any stretch of the No, I know, I know, I know, it's not I know. Rare. Just to be accurate. It, it's common, yeah. they're common yeah. and, you know, it, it, there's a slight difference, but it's not a big enough difference to, to, to make, you know, what they have right now is it's kind of science denial. In my, in my in my book, and, and I, I think it's also in Montpelier because they know we've had 10, 9,000 breakthrough cases, and they know that these people are just as transmissible and they can give it to others, but meanwhile we have people, there's, there's 20 businesses in Burling that you want a vaccine pass to get in, so I don't, it, this, is, this is, like I said, this is science denial, this is like vaccine misinformation or whatever you want to call it, because what I asked somebody the other day is, so you're okay if a vaccinated person comes into your restaurant and gives somebody the disease, but you just don't want an unvaccinated person to come and give it to them? Because you're just as likely to encounter somebody on the street that's vaccinated that has COVID as unvaccinated. There was, last month in uh, Massachusetts, there were one week in Massachusetts, December 1st to December 7th, there were 11,000 breakthrough cases in one week. There's been 65,000 in Massachusetts. There's been 80,000 in New York. So there's hundreds of thousands of these in our general area. There's people crossing over the border. Then we might have these signs that say vaccinated only. It makes no sense. There's no medical or epidemiological reason to have any segregation between vaccinated and unvaccinated. In fact, I mean, so that everybody's getting it? Everybody's getting it, yeah. I mean, well, that's, well, that's that, what the state yeah. is showing. That's what the state of Vermont data, the state of Massachusetts, this is right off their website, the state of New York. And, and, and the, other, the other issue here is, is what I ask is, well, when did these vaccinated people become unvaccinated? And apparently, yeah, right, right. apparently the answer to that is about three months, because New York also did a study, which is posted on the CDC's website, where they took their 10,000 breakthrough cases and they asked them, how, when did you get vaccinated? Well, the average time that they got infected after vaccination was less than three months which means the vaccine for the average person didn't even last three months. Okay, so- we're talking about a six month booster, but that's apparently not soon enough. So in other words, what you're seeing from what you're reading from the CDC website and from the, is that uh, essentially, I guess, that immunity fails after a certain it point last of time. Very long. If you're vaccinated, that and, it and fails. In fact, South Korea has just recommended boosters every three months because they notice every, that three, every months? three months they're having a huge outbreak and they are like Vermont. They are one of the most vaccinated countries in the world and they are also the most masked country in the world. So they have 95% masking and pretty close to the same amount of vaccination and they're having their biggest outbreak of the whole pandemic, kind of like Vermont is. So they've looked at the data and said, well, gosh, it looks like it's only lasting three months. Okay. So, All right. So tell, okay. So, but you also said, as I said too, that, um, that there were a series of town meetings, correct? Right. Um, and that you went to a Shelburne one. And the question, oh, let's go back a little bit. Governor Scott has refused to, refused essentially to declare a statewide mask mandate. Thank you, right? Governor Scott. Yeah. And he turned those decisions over to the local towns and villages. Uh, and there were numbers of town meetings um, in which the people voted or their representatives voted to the do a mask right. mandate or not. Um, and you kind of kept track of all that. Well, I've been right? watching. You've and, been and they, trying to. They, they stopped reporting on it, but at last count. You went to the Shelburne I one. I went though. to Shelburne and Charlotte. And at last count, there's way more that said no to the mask mandate and said yes, which doesn't really surprise me. I assume the only ones that would say yes would be Burlington, Montpelier, and a few other. Um, did they? Burlington they, they, did. Burlington, Burlington did, did and Montpelier did. But the big retail areas, so far from what I can tell, South Burlington and Williston, 
um, have not. And, and actually, the last time I went shopping yesterday in South Burlington, signs were all off the big stores, um, meaning the big grocery stores and the, and the uh, hardware stores. There wasn't even a sign asking you to wear a mask if you weren't vaccinated, there were no signs whatsoever about How many, did you visit a lot of these stores? I went to, I went to Lowe's and I went to Hannaford's. Deliberately? South Burlington, yeah, I was shopping. I know, but, but did <laughs> oh, you, yeah. yeah but then I noticed I took, I had a double take because it's been, what, a year since you didn't see something about the mask or COVID on the stores and there was nothing on either store. So there was though a vote in South Burlington, correct? Right, and the vote said that public buildings had to be masked, but everybody else decided for themselves. So apparently these large stores decided for themselves, we're done with masks. Why, do you suppose? Uh, they didn't want to have to enforce it, probably. Right. I, I was interesting because I w ran into a worker at one of the stores which were requiring masks, and he said the difficulty, his store didn't want to do it, and the difficulty was it puts the store in the very uncomfortable position of enforcement. Right. Right. And that, and, that was a lot of the testimony yeah. at the town meetings were business owners that didn't want to have to have to ask their teenage employees to confront adults about wearing a mask. They mm -hmm. had a hard enough time getting help. And they didn't want oh, right, to do that. Right, right, yeah. Right. So yeah, I mean that that's part of the thing. Did, um, by the way, did you see yesterday the headlines in the free press which said that these mask mandates on buses were causing fights? Physical yeah. fights. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. doesn't surprise right. me. And people I mean uh, people aren't happy about it. I'm not happy about it. It makes I I testify it makes me sick when I wear a mask. And my doctor told me, well, that's because you're trapping germs in the mask. And that's one of the big fallacies of the whole mask thing is that these masks are not meant to be worn for two or four hours. In hospitals and in doctors, they, they, they throw them away. They don't even clean them, okay? And, and what they recommend is people re throw them away or boil them in water. Nobody's doing that. So you're trapping germs in it and you're touching it. And, and most of the data shows the places that are highly masked had, had worse outbreaks than places that weren't. I mean, all the most masked countries are Italy, Spain, the United States, and, and they're way up there in cases. And, and all of Africa has nothing going on. And they, and okay, they I have, want to get to that. Yeah, in they a bit. have 5% masking and have about 5% um, vaccines, and they, and they are doing better than anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. Even though they're a very poor country, too. Even though they're a very poor country, and mm -hmm. I'm guessing their hospitals aren't as good as ours, but I could be wrong. Maybe there's just something I don't know. Maybe they just have spectacular healthcare facilities, and that's why their, their case, their... Um, Death rates are a tenth of Vermont's, and Vermont's are one of the lowest. Um, but anyway, so let's get back to these town meetings, because that's direct. I would guess that town meetings are um, an example of direct democracy, right? Where people really have a chance right. to talk. And so when you were in Shelburne, what was the uh, atmosphere? What was the attitude? Well, it, I went well, to the Burlington one, by the way, to, late, but. The Burlington one about mask mandates was totally tumultuous, just people yelling at each other. But, but, but anyway, what happened to The majority of the people there opposing it, because the majority, no. at Charlotte and Shelburne, yeah, the majority yeah, yeah. of the people opposed the mask mandate. Okay, and so what happened? Well, it was, they were very calm. Was it civil? Got up and, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, there was only 15, 20 people at each one. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one doctor, test, two doctors testified at one, testified, get, you know, spoke at one, and, um, and a couple of business owners, and then just people that said a lot of the same things. Look, it's time to do something different because this isn't working. You know, we've been doing this for a year, and it's shown, more shown than a year, no, right? Well, more than a year, and it's shown no improvement. And and I mean, I since we're talking about masks, I mean, it, you know, Vermont has made the news, and and the, the the graph of the United States is pretty much the same. This here shows Vermont's cases the last year, mask mandate, and then a big surge when we were eighty five percent masked. We removed the mask here, it went down again. Vaccines hit, it went up again. So you can draw whatever conclusion you want from that, but it, that's, the, that's the way the data looks in pretty much every, everywhere in the United States is that- um, Especially in the Northeast. We were all masked, and, and I was talking about South Korea. 95% mass, a surge. Went away, vaccine, a surge. And, and there's, there's two or three websites you can, you can look up every country in the world and look at these statistics. Here's, I mean, I'm not going to keep showing you these, but here's other countries that show where the mask was put in place and then the surge afterwards. And so we keep insisting that mask works and pe people are showing you all these studies that have been done and scientific stuff. You can throw it all out the window and this is real world stuff. This is what ha has been happening around the world. And I, I actually couldn't find a single country anywhere where the, when the mask went into place, 
COVID went away. It, it just didn't happen. And one of the funnier ones, somebody printed out from the CDC's website, November 19th of 2020, and all the cases in the United States. So this is when the first surge occurred and pretty much the whole United States was about 85% masking. Some of the interior was left, but the coastlines were more. Well, here's a year later, and it looks exactly the same. So after a year of masking and vaccines, our case surge looks exactly the same. So, so people are saying it's working. I have a hard time agreeing with that when you look at stuff like well, this. It, what do you mean by working? I think people think it's working in that they hope in a way that right. this will bring cases down and that they can go back to normal life. But it, so in your research, that does not appear to be the case, right? Well, I would like people to, to be think more, about it. Have a, be a critical right. thinker and look at this too. Look, you know, go on to World Meter, go on the John Hopkins, go on the CD web website. And CDC look at is the Center for Disease Control right. in Atlanta, and right? another one called COVID-19 Health Data, which is by, I want to say Carnegie Mellon, will actually show you the masks, will show you more stuff and you can line it up and you can compare states, which is what I did with the southern states and New England right now, because New England's having an outbreak. The southern states are all doing really great. And the southern states have less vaccines, less masking. In fact, they're not masking at all. And the northern states still have it. So you, you look at those things, then you go, hmm, you know, be a But you're asking thinker. those for people to use their own. Use your, use your head and, don't, head, and yeah. don't keep listening to these experts who have been wrong over and over and over again. Right. I mean, over and over and over. I mean, Dr. Fauci, somebody called him in the press the other day, the wrongest person that's ever been wrong. And yeah, you can look back at statements they've made. The vaccine will be 100% effective. It, it will keep anybody from getting it. It'll keep anybody from spreading it. Um, this yeah, is but all. What they really say though, that hospitalizations will be down and right. Well, in the beginning they said none of this was gonna happen and yeah. now they keep changing their story, but it's, it's not even remotely true anymore, you know, um, about cases, about hospitalization, and about deaths, because the deaths are going up and up and up. What I'm also shocked about is that as this system in a way continues our society is being so affected by it the consequences of the shutdowns the right. lockdowns the uh, the consequences are really severe if you look at places like where the opioid crisis is huge too oh yeah and suicides are way up um and crime and crime right right which i don't i mean there's no direct cause and effect but the society itself our society is having huge problems that, I, that we have not seen before i'm not that i is, remember and i'm old is, a lot of it is mental illness too i mean like a, a a form of it i mean all the therapists i know said their business has just gone crazy up I hate to say crazy their business is really Right, it doubled or tripled. They can't even handle right. the people. And this is, I wish I had my mask. This is because of this. It's not because of COVID. People need to see faces. They need to see people laugh and smile. And they need to see people talking, especially, especially children. It, it, to me, it's a crime that we're masking children when children have virtually no chance of dying from this disease. But it, it's been pushed in everybody's head that, that this, is, this is a dangerous Five thing. Five-year-olds now. Five-year-olds, even though the CDC and even though the Pfizer, Pfizer drug test showed there was no difference whatsoever between a vaccinated child and an unvaccinated child. Well, I just wanted to mention something else uh, also because the unvaxxed are really being put in a category which can only mean that people are going to, as they say in woke culture, other them, make them into this disease vector of other people that deserve no real respect in our society. And I've seen that over and over, that um, we are dividing society into those people who are vaccine and those who are not, with great deal of punishment toward the people and blame toward people who are not vaxxed. And, 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 uh, and there's no basis for it on well, science right now. There's absolutely none because once once again, you can, get, you can get COVID from a vaccinated person. I've had four people in my car in the last two weeks that all That's right, had COVID. That's you're a taxi cab driver, right? I, I had, that all had COVID and all had breakthrough cases. And it was all in a short amount of time. So this, if I had four people in my car in two weeks, then it's all over the place. And, and we have nine to 10,000 in, in Vermont. And that's probably way underreported because all this stuff is underreported. 
Um, I mean, there was a nurse we know that got on from UVM and was complaining that the doctors didn't want to report vaccine injuries. Um, and so, I mean, I mean, that's another thing is we're, we're being told the, the vaccine is effective and it's obviously not effective. I mean, yes. It's not you, effective certainly against variants. Either. Well, it's not, it's not as effective against transmission. It's, I mean, our cases are through the roof and we're, and we're at 95%. So how anybody can look at that and say it's doing well, well, let's put it this way. This vaccine would have never been approved if what we were seeing now was presented as the data back in December of last year. We're seeing about a 50% effectiveness. We're seeing transmission. We're seeing people get hospitalized and people dying, and it only lasts three months. So if, they had, if Pfizer had come out and said, okay, we've got, a, we've got something for you, but it's probably only gonna last three months, and you probably can still get it. You can probably still transmit it. You can probably still die from it. It would have never been approved, mm -hmm. but they told us, I mean, their data said the exact opposite thing. So right now we know this is not, not true. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, injuries are, you know, according to VAERS, which, which I look at all the time. VAERS, you should say what that VAERS is. VAERS is the is Vaccine Adverse Event Recording System. It's and been that's for the for, government, our government, it's right? It's through the government and the mm -hmm. CDC. It's been around 25 years. And the, the, the injuries from this vaccine that have been reported are 100 times worse than any vaccine ever that's been produced and marketed. And, and we keep hearing that it's safe and effective. Well, first of all, the, the, the pharmaceutical industry testified to get immunity from prosecution by saying vaccines are inherently unsafe. Okay, so mm -hmm. the vaccine isn't safe. This particular one is the most unsafe that's ever been produced. Well, first I mean, of all, it's not even approved, really. Well, it's either. not really even approved. Pfizer is, Pfizer I mean, these are the latest, this is right off the government's website. So we have 20,000 deaths. We have 12,000 reports. In the world of, or in the state? Just in the United States. Okay. Uh, 20, 12,000 reports of myocarditis, which is very, very common. Among apparently. young people, too. And neurological problems, 20,000, and 950,000 adverse events reported so far. And, and, you know, there's a disclaimer at the bottom of this saying that doesn't mean that the vaccine caused the death. But, That's true. But, I, but all you have to do is go on the VAERS website, which you can do start reading some of the reports, which I've printed out a couple, of the people that have died like the moment they took the vaccine. And, and you won't believe that the vaccine didn't cause it. And of course, their, their relatives don't believe, you know, believe it either. In fact, there's even comments underneath of some of these reports you know, that, that from doctors and from the, from the people saying the vaccine probably killed them. You know, so you can go on and find out the age of the person. You can just punch in a, a state, find out the age, and it'll, it'll say, like I printed a bunch, that they died pretty much the moment after they got the vaccine. And it reports all what happened. They had a heart attack and, 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 and died. And so, you know, if I'm a healthy person that's 30 years old and I take a, some kind of medication and I have a heart attack within five minutes after that, I'm sorry. Right, but right, I'm gonna, right, right, right. Well, you're going to assume that, I'm right. I personally mm -hmm. think that, that, that that's the way it was, but... Okay, so before we go, I did want to comment on some of the legal issues that are um, going on also with the, with the travel ban and with the Biden administration. Is there something yeah. else that you wanted to? Well, yeah, I want to just read a little bit about this, uh, the uh, Surgeon General. Our Surgeon General? No, the Surgeon General of Florida, who seems to have common sense. Okay, <laughs> so Florida is a, is a case study in a way that the cases are coming down, right? Right. Right, okay, and they've, they've had very few restrictions in Florida, correct? Correct, I've okay. been there three times. And this is a statement that you... That you right, so they, they recently appointed a Harvard-educated um, African man as their uh, new Surgeon General, and uh, this is, he made a statement to the press two weeks ago, and this is very interesting because he said, I wish I had written his name down, I'm quite sorry. As we know, these vaccines are not preventing transmission. Sure, they reduce the likelihood of transmission. And even that is sort of questionable, depending on how far out you go. But they're not preventing it. I've heard some leaders say things like, we'll create safe workplaces by mandating these vaccines. Well, they're really decoupled because the infective can still happen whether people are vaccinated or not. I mean, it's very obvious. You remember, these people are also telling you that all these breakthrough infections are rare. Well, they're obviously not rare. In fact, they're common. So this idea that the vaccine mandates are needed to create safe workplace is a complete lie. It's continued to he be said repeated. That? Yeah, it's continued to be repeated, and you should know that it's not at all backed up by science. In fact, the science says something that's completely the opposite. Now, this is the Surgeon General of Florida. 
part of the reason that some people are not comfortable with these vaccines is because of the climate of scientific dishonesty about the vaccine, whether it's natural immunity, denial of that in the face of data, or in the case of the vaccines, open, honest discussions about both effectiveness and safety. There's been dishonesty around that. The reality of how safe these vaccines are is absolutely not public. Healthy people have had adverse reactions after reaction. There's been a concerted effort to prevent these types of stories, these experiences from receiving the attention that they obviously should receive. It's completely ridiculous. But that's the Surgeon General of Florida, which of course, in our blue state, Florida is not particularly is, the bad believed, guys, right? right? Part of the bad guys. Yes. Part, Florida is, of but course, a red is state. booming down there. They're inviting and, uh, firefighters I was and surprised. Police. I was surprised to see so many businesses are moving from California to places like Texas. I Texas think, and Florida. And yeah. I think our governor, frankly, has been very aware of that. And therefore, I believe that he's been incredibly cautious in his approach to restrictions, requirements, and so forth. And he turned over those decisions to the towns, and it seems like in a more or less democratic fashion. That's the first democratic input right, we've had vote, during this right, whole, right, whole right. It does seem like the towns have rejected some of these major restrictions the, about masks. Before we leave, we only have a couple more minutes left. I did want to mention uh, about South Africa, Southern Africa as yeah. well. South Africa is a nation within Africa, but Southern Africa. Uh, the president recently said because of an Omicron uh, variant, which seems to be breaking out, that there should be travel bans across all of southern Africa, and, and that those people cannot come here. Um, and I'm so surprised because there's so little COVID there. According to any statistics, there's, there's no COVID in places like Mozambique or Namibia, and yet those people can't come here. It's very worrisome because that, of course, is a country with many, many poor people, with, with mostly black people, and the president is somehow getting away with saying that they can't come here. It, and it's, shock, it's kind of shocking to me because... Right. What goes... It, 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 it just is... I, is it being challenged in the court? I don't even know. Do you? Who would challenge it? Well, yeah. they challenged the Muslim ban. Yeah. I guess that, but that's because Donald Trump did it, not Biden. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I mean, why the contradiction? I don't get it, you know? Well. But, and, because, and I feel very sympathetic to Southern Africa because they're basically poor people. Right. And they're basically brown people and black people who, um, who probably feel very punished by all this with no particular reason. They have not had huge outbreaks of COVID, correct? Right, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, the, the total ridiculous policy that's not based on science that will let people from, let's say, who's having a big surge right now. England. Well, the people from England can come here as long as they've been vaccinated, which means nothing because, no, because England tens is of a thousands. Because England right. is surging, right. Right, tens of thousands of Eng people in England have had vaccines and COVID also. So we'll let those people in, but in Africa where they've had virtually no COVID, but if had four cases of Omicron, we we're going to ban More them. More than country. four, though. Okay, well, it doesn't matter if there's 100, there's 10,000. I know. There's been millions of infected people in Europe, and they're all allowed to come here. Anyway, I'm just wanting people to really think about the differences between that policy and the differences, as you say, of Europeans. Europeans can come here, and that's where Omicron is really burgeoning, it seems to me. Well, they would have used the R word if Trump did. Yeah, I know, but we're not going to do that. I don't, I'm not going to label it. I'm just suggesting that this, uh, whatever this policy is, has adverse effects on black yeah. people, even in this country, even in this country. Once again, the policy is not working. It, you know, the, the, there's a thing in well, business. Well, the travel called. ban is working to keep Africans out, that's for sure, which I don't want. I mean, you know, I don't know what, the, I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know why. Back to mask briefly too. I mean, all these countries that are highly masked doing poorly. I could not. I could not find one country that was under fifty percent masking that was in the top seventy-five worst COVID deaths per thousand. Yeah. All the ones that were the lowest masking rate also were down the bottom. So, of it, the so what rate. you're saying in close is that. Um, look at stuff, think about well, it. Don't, yeah, yeah, look at stuff, think about it, but also realize that doing the same thing over and over again it, it's not, does it not doesn't work, right. be working, and, and, and that we should think this through a little bit. Right? And that's what the governor of Colorado did yesterday, right? I he know, said, I saw that. That was great. He said, he was you know a, what? He's a Democrat, too. Yeah, well, you know, I, he, maybe he's, he's fed up with it, you know. He's fed up with it. So if I you want to wear a mask, status. wear a mask. If you want to get a vaccine, get a vaccine. That's my look. No, but that's he also look. said clearly, we're going back to normal. Yeah. Well, that's we're what just, we all need to do. We're through with that. it. We're going back to There's normal. There's too much collateral damage.
Yeah. I, I know too many people that have lost their businesses, almost lost their businesses. I know I ran into one yesterday, um, especially yeah. with small businesses. Small businesses. Small yeah. businesses. All right. So maybe next month we'll be here and we hope to see you again at that time. Thanks for listening.